Would, would you join with me and let's just pray. The Lord, as we come to the word, to, we pray, God, that this will change and transform our life. Give us ears to hear what you would say. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, uh, I want to uh, I want to introduce our series for our for January is being church. It's not being the church. It's not doing church. It's being church. And what does that have to have to do? And so, Pastor Danny and I are, are going to be tag teaming, and and uh, we're really excited about this series. Well, today I'm going to be talking about being church, which means being a praying church. So again, um, I want to tell you a story. The, the title of, of today's sermon or message is Praying Prayers God Can Say Yes To. Praying Prayers God Can Say Yes To. So now, of course, uh, we had four daughters, and uh, one of the things that I said to them, and I have passed this on, if you're still raising your family or you're thinking about having a family, remember this. When your kids ask you questions, instead of saying no, 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 what I would say to my girls, I would say, ask me questions that I can say yes to. <laughs> ask me questions I can say yes to. Hey, Dad, they're 14 years old. Hey, Dad, can I drive the car? No, you're not ready for that yet. Hey, Dad, can I, can I stay up all night? No, but Dad... Can I help you with the dishes? Yes, you can. So the question here is that I saw you kind of laughing, and I think you can unpack that, but I want to say it again. If, you have, if you're still raising your family or you're thinking about having a family or if you're grandparents or whatever, so it's one of the things, and those of you who are here that are still in that zone, ask your parents questions so they can say yes to. So it occurred to me in this time of prayer that, that that was the sermon title today is Ask God Prayers That He Can Say Yes To. And so would you turn with me in your Bibles to John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. Turn, and if you have your physical Bibles handy, you can do that. If you have your electronic Bibles, um, they count too. So Jesus, in John chapter 14, 15, and 16, it's really one of the most important hearts of the, the gospel of John. For Jesus is talking in terms of how to pray, how to trust the Holy Spirit. And so Jesus, when he's comforting his disciples, because he's on his way back to heaven, and here's what he, he says. Um, I, I, love, I love it. I'm going to actually start in verse 12 of chapter 14. It says, I tell you the truth. Now, if you know the old King James Bible, the old King James would say, verily, verily, I say unto thee. Well, verily comes from the, the uh, Latin veritas, you know, like humilitas, veritas. You know, and uh, the reality here is that he's saying, if you have, I tell you the truth, anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. Now, that's really key. Anyone who has faith will do what I have been doing. So that's the first clue that we have about how do we ask God to answer prayers that he can say yes to. Well, we see it right there. If we have faith in him, we will do the things that he's doing. Jesus said that over and over again. He says, I only do what I see the Father doing. Now, again, those of you who are parents or grandparents or, or in influencing, can you in all faith say to your kids, do what I do? Live your life in front of Jesus the way that I do. If you're a boss, could you say to your employees, you know what, live your life, be the kind of employee that I am. There's this idea here of there's some sort of standard or some sort of goal that transcends our humanity and our selfish, self-centered kind of lifestyle. So then Jesus said this, starting in verse 13. Um, he says, um, And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may bring glory to the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. So if you don't understand that, that sounds like just a carte blanche. Hey, God, can you give me a million dollars? No. Maybe that's not good for you. And again, I remember as, as a parent and I remember as a kid thinking that there was things that I thought that I couldn't live without. But because of my mom and dad's perspective, they said, no, you're not ready for that yet. 
You will be, but you're not ready for that yet. And that's one of the things, and again, I'm, I want to be very careful not to ever be offensive, but that's the challenge with most temptation. Most temptation is being tempted about getting something that you can get at the proper time, but it's a shortcut. That's one of the challenges of premarital sex. God didn't goof when he made sex, and, and it's something to be enjoyed between a husband and a wife in a committed, monogamous, married relationship. But what happens is premarital sex is the temptation to have something that's out of sequence, and what happens is, oh, that's just being prudish. No, God has a plan, and when we step outside of his plan and his kairos, then we wonder why things go poorly, the reality is, is that God has a plan, and when he says, wait, or no, you're not ready for that, it's all about this, that Jesus is saying, we need to understand this issue. Now, he says, you can ask anything in my name, and I was thinking about this, in my name, and so again, because we don't often think in these terms, but when you do something in the name of somebody else, what that is, is you are actually acting as an intermediary for that person that commissioned you. You are acting under authority. So again, when your boss says, go and tell so-and-so uh, that I want them to do this, you know, basically you don't just walk in and you say, look, I want you to do such and such, but you say, hey, the boss just communicated this, and, and he's asked me to, to, to do this. So you are actually invoking that person's name, their authority, their perspective, their position, and, and you're saying, I'm doing this in the name of this. So when Jesus says, ask anything in my name, it's not a panacea. It's not that he's some big, um, I don't know what that was. It's not that he's some cosmic Santa Claus that, you know, you, you, you uh, say, hey, can I have this and 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 this. And uh, if you just were with your kids or your grandkids in the store over the holidays, you go down the toy aisle, the, the toy aisle, they would purchase the entire store. Grandpa, can you buy me this? Can you do it? Whatever. But what happens when it's in his name, what we're doing is we are acting as his ambassador. The ambassador doesn't have authority in and of themselves. They have authority because they are acting on behalf of someone greater than themselves. When we pray prayers that God can say yes to, we are discerning, and that comes back to Don's exhortation this morning, we are discerning what God wants to have happen. So case in point, when we pray for peace in our house, is that a prayer that God can answer? Absolutely. When we pray that God will reveal himself to us in more power, is that a prayer that he can answer? Yes. When we pray God use me, is that a prayer that he can answer? We are asking his name. It's not in his name where we're abusing that, but we are praying in line, in alignment with the purposes, the eternal purposes of God, which requires discernment. So again, with our kids, hey, dad, can I take the car out for a spin when I'm 15? No, but when they got 16 and they got their L and then they got their N and whatever, then it was that wonderful day when I said, here, would you please go to the store for me? It was glorious. And I remember the first time my dad did that to me, I drove from 1005 Ray Street, I drove three blocks to Heron's Market to pick up milk. I thought it was the best thing since sliced bread. We are also invoking the power of Jesus' name. Now again, I'm not here to offend, I'm not here to, to create difficulty for you or to be judgmental, but part of my role is to say, we need to be paying attention to what, what the word of God says. Now, I am not zeroing in on any one person, but it is very concerning to me in this last season of our culture that Christians have become very sloppy with taking the Lord's name in vain. Now, I'm not zeroing in on any of you, but I hear it all the time where, oh God, oh my God, you know, OMG, blah, 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 blah. And, and, and it, it concerns me because, again, um, and like I said, I'm not zeroing in on any one of you, but it concerns me because 
that the Bible, one of the Ten Commandments, it says, do not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. And what that means is flippantly or profanely. And so the reality is, is if Satan can get the people of God to be flippant about the use of the name of Jesus, it loses its power and its impact. Not for us, but, but the thing is, is that God is saying, I want you to realize that there is incredible power in my name. Don't misuse it and don't have it become an exclamation point because something wonderful happened or somebody has scored a wonderful God. Oh my God, did you see that goal? Of course he did. He saw it. Or as an exclamation, are you following me? This isn't me banging on you. You know, I'm just trying to say, but when, when Jesus says, use my name, you, we need to be careful to remember that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confesses that he is Lord. There is power in the name of Jesus. Then you read through the book of Acts and you will say that they said, we do this in the name of Jesus. When they prayed for people to be healed, they didn't say, OMG. When they prayed, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, rise and walk. I give you what I can. We need to be careful. Uh, do you receive that from me? I'm not trying to criticize you. I'm not trying to judge you. But I'm just saying, would you pay attention in this season of prayer? Would you pay attention? Maybe you have inadvertently slipped into that because it's, you know, they, they do it on TV, they do it in the movies. Can I tell you a little story? When you, when you travel the world, most people around the world are learning English from our movies and from TV. And uh, what happens is you go and, and these are Christians and they're dropping the F-bomb and whatever because they just think that's the way we all talk. And I said, did you know that that's probably not the best thing to say in English? Oh, really? My point taken? We need to be careful. The next thing is that, so I asked, I thought to myself, so I, I have some examples, and there are others, but I have some examples of prayers that we can pray that Jesus can say yes to. And the first one is, is found in Psalm 122, verse 6. And so there the psalmist said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now again, a disclaimer. In a group this size, depending on what you've read and what you've been exposed to, that probably we would not have a consensus about the place of Israel in the world. So I don't, this, I'm not wanting to talk about this politically or theologically or end times, whatever. All I know is that the Bible says that we are supposed to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Now, I think that we should be praying because again, whether they like it or not, whatever happens in the world in the Middle East, and therefore it brings in the United States and it brings in Canada, and it's a flashpoint. So when we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we are not praying for a political party, we're not playing, praying for, for a, a prime minister specifically, or for the Knesset, whatever. But what we are saying is, is that there's something very pivotal about that place, and we need to be praying for peace. Did you do you accept that for me? Now, here's a little hermeneutics. That's the big 50 cent word about how to interpret scripture. There is what is called words of association and dynamic equivalent. A word of association goes like this. If you listen to the news, they will say, well, Ottawa today said such and such. Well, you know what? I've been to Ottawa. It doesn't talk. Or if you listen to the news, well, today out of the White House, the White House said, I have been to the White House. It doesn't talk either. It's a word of association. What it's saying is, is that Ottawa is the Canadian government, which is the people who make up the government, whatever. So it's a word of association. And so you need to remember. So it says, Jerusalem, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I would like to submit to you that there is an, an additional and important distinction here where that is a word of association. And this kicks up another um, hermeneutical principle and it's called a dynamic equivalent. So for the people that the psalmist was speaking to when they said pay for the peace of Jerusalem, they weren't praying for a city, but they were praying for everything that Jerusalem represented. It was the seat of government. 
It was where the king was. It was where the temple was. It was where people went at Passover. It was a place of influence. So I would suggest to you, when the scripture says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, it is also hermeneutically sound and biblically accurate. And it's a, it's a prayer that God can say yes to. When you pray for Jerusalem, you can say, Lord, I am praying for my Jerusalem, which is I pray for my Canadian government. I pray for all that's going on there. And again, there's another place that says that we're to pray for those in authority over us. In 1 Timothy, it says that. But it's, I find it really helpful when I say pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm hoping to install a little thought process in you when you think, when it says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, we are praying for our nation. We're praying for governmental structures and we're praying for all of these things. And I'll tell you one of my most moving Canadian experiences as a Canadian by choice, not by birth, was being at the, at the Peace Tower there on, on Parliament Hill and seeing engraved in granite, and he shall have dominion from sea to sea. Pray for our peace of, the peace of Jerusalem. The next one is, is praying for those you love. This is a prayer that Jesus can say yes to. And I chose one of many, but this is Philippians 1, 9 to 11. Now, again, if you're praying for those you love, Paul the Apostle was the spiritual dad. He was the apostolic voice. And when they ran into difficulty, they looked for the Apostle Paul as their spiritual father. And this is what he wrote to those people in Philippi. So again, if you're a physical dad or you're a physical mom or you're a physical grandpa or a physical grandma or an auntie or an uncle or a friend, or whatever, here's what Paul says. He says, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight. Whoa! Is that a prayer God can say yes to? If your kid came to you and said, hey, mom, dad, can you help me love more? <laughs> hey, mom and dad, can you help me abound in more knowledge and a depth of insight? And I love this. It's love and it's, it's, it's knowledge and insight that those things are important and deserve it. Again, coming back to the exhortation that Don shared with us this morning, that this idea, it's not knowledge that's going to win the day, but it is knowledge that is informed by love and that is tempered by insight. Not showing up at your neighbor's door with Christmas cookies at four in the morning, as Don said. Are you following what I'm saying? This is, so you're saying, well, I don't know how to pray. Well, the Bible is just chock full of wonderful places. And so can you pray like that? I can pray like that. And can God say yes to that? Hey, Dad, can I help you with the dishes? Yes, you can do that. Hey, Dad, can I wash the car? Yes, you can do that. Hey, Dad, can I mow the lawn? Yes. Hey, Mom, can I help you with the laundry? Yes. And then it says, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless until the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, his name, to the glory and praise of God. So Jesus said, ask anything in my name that the Father may be glorified. Not that I can be glorified, not that Sunshine Hills can be glorified, but let me tell you, in this Kairos season of our church, I want us to say, God, what are you doing? What are you saying? How do you want us to pray? How do you want us to move? Then I really hope that all of you are gonna, if, uh, that can will show up on Wednesday for prayer. I hope that you'll take time for this next three, the three weeks following that as we're going to be equipping and talking about how do we evangelize. We've got the best thing going and we're the most tight-lipped about it. How do we learn to share organically and not like stand out on the street corner with your little tracks? But it's an organic thing. And all I can say is this. I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. Aren't you glad that somebody shared Jesus with you. Well, I don't want to impose on them and I don't want to upset them. It's kind of like, hey, there's gas at a dollar a gallon or a dollar a liter down the street. You'd all get up and run and go get your gas tank filled up. Why? Because it's good news. It makes a difference. Pray for peace of Jerusalem. Pray for those who love. Here's another one. Next slide. Pray for the laborers of the harvest. Jesus 
when he chose the 12, he said, yeah, I chose you, but he realized that those 12 were just there to facilitate and equip and train others. And so here's what Jesus said. He said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Ask the Lord of harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Now, again, when I think in terms of our church being the church that Jesus wants us to be, we have several challenges that are crucial to the spiritual health and impact of Sunshine Hills. One is our financial situation. God has been faithful. But again, you'll see that for the fourth time that our, our income you know, through tithes and offerings has, has been down. And we, our church council, we prayed, we, we, needed, we had to uh, reduce some hours, we had to do some things, we had to be, get really creative. But let me tell you something, I'm not here to shame you or beat on you or whatever. But when you say, Lord, do things, you have to be willing to be the, the person who's willing to be the answer to what you're praying. Did you accept that for me? And the good thing is, is as we give, he gives back to us. That's a whole other sermon. But here's what he said. The, the harvest is plentiful for the laborers of food. Does Jesus always tell the truth? Yes. When he says that the harvest is plentiful, it is as true in 2020 as it was in AD 32. And so we need to believe that there are people out there that are looking for truth. They are looking for righteousness. They are looking for answers to questions that they cannot answer for themselves. And so we need to wake up, and part of this is we need to say, Lord, send forth laborers. And when we pray that, we need to also be willing when the Holy Spirit gives us a little gentle nudge, and he says, I want you to do that. Again, we're going to, at the end of the month, we're going to be recognizing our volunteers. But again, I said, uh, we, I'm asking you to pray for resources for this church that we can fulfill what God has asked us to do. And the other is people resources, that we have people who volunteer. But let me tell you something. One of the things that will keep Sunshine Hills from being the church that we are called to be is as if we don't have people who are willing to say yes to being a, a, co a laborer together in the field. Now, I want you to know something. Last year, I put my money where my mouth is. So um, uh, one of my favorite Sunday mornings where Todd and I, we were back in the, in the, in the Little Lambs, you know, the 252 kids or whatever group it was. It was awesome. We had a chance to be with this wonderful teenage um, girl who she knew how to run that room, your daughter. And she said, no, now we do this. And so Todd said, yes, that's good. It was glorious. These kids were having a good time. I took a picture. We had froggy hats on. It was great. So if you're saying, well, I don't know about kids, and that's just one example. But let me say, when we say, Lord, thrust forth laborers, you need to be willing to be the answer to the prayers you're praying. Do you accept that from me? So again, it's not your grandma's Sunday school where you got a little quarterly and you, you say a memory verse and you, you, you read the story and you color something and then you throw the kids out the door. Let me tell you something. Our kids' ministry is dynamic and they are being taught a dynamic, living, vibrant, relevant faith. VBS, all those things. So again, this isn't my beat you up kind of thing. I'm saying, folks, we have a Kairos moment here. Let's make sure we're paying attention. When we pray, last slide, he said, oh, thank God he's done. And I'll say that flippantly or vainly. That's true. You're know, saying, I want you to know that God has a message for us. When we pray, Prayers that Jesus can say yes to, what we are doing is we are agreeing with God. We are saying, yes, the world is lost. We are saying, yes, people need hope. We are saying, yes, people need to be healed. We are saying, yes, marriages need to be transformed. We are saying, yes, we want to make a difference in this world. When we say yes to God, he can say yes to us. My grandfather, my mom's dad, he, he said this in Lottie and I, one of our traditions is we watch the Santa Claus movies at Christmas. And there's the one where, where the, the, the head elf says, help me help you, help me help you. So my grandfather used to say, when you please to please God, you can do anything you please. 
when you please to please God, you can do anything you please because your heart is his heart. And so when he says, do such and such, and you say, my heart is to reach my neighbors, can God say yes to that? And everybody said, yes. Can I make a difference? Yes. Can I give? And it comes back to what Dennis, the exhortation, I, I urge you, therefore, brethren, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice when you live your life for yourself, you live your life for yourself. When you present your body a living sacrifice, let me tell you as a person who's been a Christian a long time, who is now in his 60s, let me tell you something, that when I do what God wants, my life just works so much better. And church is not about a spectator thing and, and whatever and and I also, we're going to talk about the church outside of these four walls. And some of you, you are volunteering in other ways. You're making a difference in your family. and ever. This isn't my beat you up kind of a recruit sermon. I'm just saying, let's be willing to be the answers to the, the prayers that we pray. And Jesus said, your kingdom come. And when we say amen, we say amen. Now, in closing, I asked Danny Hunt. You know, he was so gracious to help me this morning. And I'm going to ask you to pray... I, I'm going to give you an example of a prayer that, that we can say yes to. And it's in my Bible here someplace. But did, okay, so, so Danny put it up. So this morning, oh, here's mine. There it is. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer with me. And, and I have this, and I, it, it's from a conference I went to. It's signed August 10th, 2012. That's eight years ago almost. So this morning... I'll give you a minute to read it over and then we're going to add, and if you can pray this prayer because it's a prayer that Jesus can say yes to, then I'm going to ask you to pray with me. I'm not asking you to do it because I'm telling you to, but I'm going to ask you. So you take a minute and you read it and this is how we're going to close this morning. So can you, do you think, you can, do you think that's a prayer that Jesus can say yes to? Would you stand with me? So let's, let's pray it out loud. You can, obviously, you have to do it with your eyes open. God hears you when you have your eyes open. Did you know that? Okay. God, let's, say it, let's read it out loud together. God, this is a new day. I freshly commit myself to the role you have invited me to play as you are building your church in this world. I am awestruck again today that you would include me in this grand, life-giving, world-transforming endeavor. So today, I joyfully offer you my love, my heart, my talents, my energy, my creativity, my faithfulness, my resources, and my gratitude. I commit all of myself to the role you have assigned in building of your church. And is there another part of that, Danny? Is there a second one that goes to that? Is that all you can get on? Let me re read the rest of what it says here. It says, I commit all of myself to the role you have assigned me in the building of your church so that it may thrive in this world, and I will bring it today. I will bring my best. You deserve it. Your church deserves it. For the church is the hope for the world. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. As we prayed this prayer, Lord, it wasn't perfunctory or by rope, but Lord, all I know is I just get goosebumps every time I pray that. And I am believing that the impact of what we did here today is going to carry us through for the remainder of this year. Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Would you keep your eyes closed? Again, one of the things that we do is make sure that we give opportunity for people to give their hearts to Jesus. Nobody's looking around. I have asked our elders just to make sure I don't miss a hand. But maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you've been in church countless times. Or maybe this is your first time. But you've never settled that Jesus is your personal Savior, that he died on the cross for you, that he rose for you, and that he wants to live in your life and empower you by raising your hand. I'd love a chance to pray with you and, 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 pr and help you pray to invite Jesus into your heart. Is there anybody like that? Okay. So Lord, we thank you and we praise you 
that, Lord, we believe that we have set our course to ask for you to use us in your name. Go with us in power as we pray. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. God bless you.